Greetings, everyone. Welcome to CRWS. Attempted counter racist review and decoding of Encanto. Um, very, very interesting um, Disney movie. Um, from my observations, um, very run of the mill um, racism in plain sight, and also um, some very, very sophisticated hidden racism as well. Uh-huh. Um, we have a um, participant who has viewed the film a number of times. So um, I'm, I'm going to see if she has um, any thoughts to share before, before I get dig into my notes. Or right, would anyone like to um, share their, their thoughts before I share my notes? Um, can I be heard from over here? Can you hear um, Ash, Helen? Yes, I can. OK. Um, yeah, I have a lot of thoughts. I'm actually just trying to read through the backstory of the making of the film. So I may be quiet for a little bit just to do some research. But I'm, I'm over, I mean, I still have a lot of thoughts. I have, I have a lot of conflicting thoughts. So I really need to process them. But yeah. I, I like the, I think the movie is pretty cool. Uh, um, what else did I say? I just say they say it darker a lot in the movie, like so many times. Yeah, that's one of the things. I, yeah, precisely. Uh, thanks for mentioning that, Z. Two minutes before the um the title screen, actually, we we hear um the darkest moment, and which is when um white people are killing the non-white male um, and the non-white people are being racially uh, displaced, racially uh, dislocated, uh, having to flee from their uh, dwelling because white people are chasing them out with swords and um, aggression. So they're, um, the, the non-white male is um, killed and then they get their um, miracle. It's, to me, it seemed like a sacrificial lamb type sort of thing, you know, like the a non-white male has to die for um, the so-called um, family to thrive or get some sort of help. Very, very, very um, interesting. And logically, the non-white male could have um, just fled with the um, other people, but for some reason, he decided to, to stay. Um, but that's because the, the white um, writers and the not possibly non-white confused uh, writer decided that hey this non-white male needs to, some non-white male needs to die in this movie we, you know we are supporting the system of white supremacy and that's what our business is making sure the non-white male is to, you know one being mistreated um, the most in this system but i have more th th things to share and we did hear a dark moment um mentioned a number of times and also step into the light bring into the light also when they were um, yeah they're doing some sort of um ceremony slash ritual um the Antonio character, non-white black male, um, king of the jungle type character. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but um, there's a ceremony where he's, you know, they tell him to step into the light, you know, and then of course, during the ceremony, he's wearing white. all white, you know, so very, very interesting color coded messages throughout the film. Um, tragic arrangements as well in the film, um, which is, brings a, from my observations, great insight into how this um system, system works and like why we should not um be engaging in the bedroom with, with white people under the system because um it just causes confusion. And this, there's this character here, uh, Camillo is the character and his um power, his gift is to like doppelgang or, or to shapeshift. And I, and I and I and I I suspect he has that ability because he has a white um, mother, and um, because he has that closeness to whiteness, he's able to you know, I don't know, maybe find more comfort in the system, being able to you know shape shift and like you know fit into various places because he has that proximity to whiteness. And he also uses his um you know proximity to whiteness to mistreat his um, victim father, there's a part where he's like, he's literally like a tiny caricature mm -hmm. of his um, victim father. And he's mocking him. I'm trying to find the, um, oh, sorry. I'm trying to find that that scene or at least put him on the screen. So um, the folks can see, oh, hold on. I'm gonna let Z try to find it cause she's seen the movie. So maybe she can do it. But anyways, that was really, in, in, right, right, oh, right, it was right there. 
We just saw it. More back. Okay, let me just. All right, it's around this part right here. Anyways, it's, it's around this scene. You see Camillo, the um, the non-white child with a white parent. Uh, the white parent is the um, suspected racist. What's his name again? Peppa. Yeah, Peppa. And um, this scene, he's he's shifting into like his um, father, but he's like a tiny caricature of his father. He's like mocking him, mistreating him in that manner. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really in your face. You know, you know, of, of course, you know, it's very common, uh, with copyright, it's very common for um, um, them to produce that sort of imagery, you know, children making fun of the, the black male, you know, the black male not getting any sort of um, correct treatment. And uh, folks want to um, chime in, share thoughts. Oh, uh, well, the song was okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was just, going through kind of reading about the making of this film and be, like be, what went into this film. So it was made by, um, well, the initial idea was by Lynn manuel Matt, but it was made by two, by the heads of Disney. And they went up to Lynn manuel Miranda who made Hamilton and basically said, oh, like we have an idea for a movie. And obviously you're like our resident quote unquote Latino person. So you have to be kind of like the face of this movie. But and then um two white males made this movie. And then when they realized that they were setting it in a country, I think they said they said it in Colombia. So then they went to Colombia to have like to get consulting about like the culture oh, wow. and the different things that, you know, like um so they had specific people do consulting for like the dancing the choreography for like the flowers the things that they the actual like things that grow there the architecture extra etc mm -hmm. and then the person who's also named on there i think her name is sharice i thought it was on here but her name is like sharice castro smith she came in afterwards which is similar to what they did with soul Soul is a movie made by two white people, and then they added a black person afterwards as a writer. They did the same thing with this Sharice Castro Smith. Oh, wow, yeah. She's supposed to be like the non-white person who can kind of hit, handle any backlash if people say that this movie is just made by white people. Mm -hmm. So I just think it's super interesting that they're and then um, the and the people that they're fleeing. It's set in the um, 1900s, so it's actually a civil war. So they're fleeing other Colombian people, uh, 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 which is interesting. It's actually well, just Colombia; they could be white people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's probably a mixture because mm -hmm. a, a whole country is, uh, as you can see from this movie, like yeah. extremely mixed. Mm -hmm. But what I just thought was interesting is like when we support a lot of these movies made by Disney about these people's lives, and they're paying people to consult them you're always going to get a perspective of these people's lives by white people it's not like these actual people's lives it's it's by white people framed for us so i just think it's interesting that they go through all this work to get like all these consultings etc instead of people just like maybe just supporting films from colombia <laughs> that's that's my thought process um, right now i think that it's uh crazy how like um the white people came and uh was was it a flea? Is it called flea? Or like attacked them and they were, I just think it was like so weird and why and I don't know why that guy the oh the the grandma's uh husband I don't know why he went back. I like that was so weird confusion possibly oh, i mean he had to he's set up to die he's oh, like the yeah. non-white male set yeah. up to die yeah they, they, they wrote that dead. yeah because that, it has I, to be headed by it has to be headed by a female like whenever yeah, there's like yeah. a, a like a non-white like in moana too right it's like a grandma yeah. who's the head yeah. it's always like a and the main has, character is also a non-white female yeah but it, yeah. but like whatever society they're in always has to be a matriarchy mm -hmm. when it's um a non-white like non-white character. Yep. 
and as a yeah the, and what, what you mentioned about um the them going to so-called Columbia to like study, you know, to study their subject, you know, not white, white people love to, you know, know their um, Negroes, whether it's like a, a brown one or a red one, a yellow one, they, they love to know their subjects. And this is, um, reminds me of the movie Black Orpheus, also written by a um, white person. Mm-hmm. And um, why does it remind me of that? Because we see a bunch of mm-hmm. non-white people um, just spending a lot of time being um, silly, you know, by just dancing. It's been like the first three days of the movie. I don't know how many days it was, but it was just dancing and singing and dancing and singing. And then when um, the the one of the few serious characters, which was Maribel, I think that's her name, mm-hmm. um, when she's trying to, like, you know, tell the characters the the truth, like, what's, what's happening? Like, hey, what's going on? Like, like, yeah, we need, With the cracks. like this needs our serious attention. The characters try to uh, avoid it or, or hide the truth or run away from the truth or distract themselves from the truth or the, you know, the serious matter at hand that they need to take care of. Very, very um, similar to what's happening on planet Earth with like the race problem, you know, us being um, dominated on a global system, a race and white supremacy and non-white people not wanting to um, solve that problem and wanting to do what the characters were doing in this movie, you know, dance, you know, celebrate, you know, have ceremonies, you know, try to get, have fake marriages, pretend to get married, you know, you know, you know, spend their time and energy being pretty for like, you know, to take pictures on these various social media for the attention, um, um, you know, wants that we have been trained to have. So it's very, 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 very um, tragic. And um, the, the confusion bombs all around um, with, you know, showing like calling this, unit of non-white people a so-called family but then seeing them to like you know practice deceit against each other you know they got home like the homeboy um bruno living in a a wall <laughs> hanging out with rats talking to himself he's developed um uh, multiple personality because it's some deep state of psychosis and it's just really like not looking good for the non-white male and, and, and this film at all <laughs> and it's like the, the girl Dolores, her powers for her to make like gossip and stuff. Oh, and for, her, you, for yeah. her to like <laughs> like tell on people like when she found out that Bruno like that um Mirabel found out about Bruno. Bruno's power, like Bruno's vision, she had to tell everybody. Like, but she didn't like, tell them that she. I know. Bruno the yeah, whole time. she like she in the <laughs> end she was I'm like I knew I, she was right. like I, I heard him every day, but you didn't tell anybody. Yeah, all the constructive yeah. stuff she keeps it to herself. Yeah, exactly, and, and it just shows you how the racist men and racist women have trained non-white people and in this regard non-white females to withhold information and just to gossip about non-constructive. Theme, you know she was her her gifts was like she was able to hear really well you know she's able to like you know hear my way so she's able to like gossip better she's able to be more more nosy i am not want to use the term stereotype i don't see it as a stereotype it's just like a refined 2020 yeah, refined um versions of racist caricatures where it's like so in your face where you know we don't even know what's happening we just see oh, oh she's like us you know she's like you know and then non-white people who are seeing this movie who like the way this character looks like, are going to emulate this sort of behavior you know withholding constructing information or you know gossiping you know having fun like while gossiping about non-constructive things and on the topic of dolores did you notice at the end like <laughs> at the <laughs> end she um so she gets isabella's like sloppy she gets the guy that isabella was originally betrothed to but even when you know so she's getting his quote unquote like sloppy seconds but even in that instance he doesn't even like her they say and he says a line like i just love love no or like i love being in love or i just want to be with somebody like he says something at some point in the film at the end yeah when isabel is not with him that Uh, oh i'm just like a lover no yeah he has so much love inside yeah so it's not like he even wants to be specifically with Dolores it's just that oh she, wants she to likes him yeah yeah which is like kind of I don't know just interesting too and that what, this like, is what happens to like the black female she doesn't she just gets the guy that nobody else wants because he's just like gets has traps. to be in a relationship yeah. and wants to marry her so we so brain trash yeah. and like, like useless 
Um, yeah, super useless. Yeah, but you know, the, the black female will take them because, you know, uh, the writers say, hey, this is all you're going to get. The white people say, this is all you're going to get. Yeah, like you're magical. You come from a magical family. Why, like, who basically heads the whole town? Why are you pining for yeah. some random guy? Yeah. Like, you could be so with a, anyone. A random guy that wanted to marry your cousin, right? That keeps getting slapped by a flower and he breaks <laughs> his nose from it. Two like, times. Yeah, so, you know, it's just really, really, really silly. Um, this uh, a lot of the characters in this film and what, what we're witnessing um um back to the, the the bruno character you know because like you know his character is just i think um an example of like the non-white um children non-white males non-white females and, and how their potential is just sabotaged by the system and um how we the whole uh, so-called family unit has been trained to also help sabotage the non-white children because you know bruno his gift is what he can see he can see the like the future you know you know so they could use that to solve a lot of problems to be very constructive but that's not happening um we have a very confused um grandma who um just again a victim of racism so she's not capable of facing the truth or solving problems in a um constructive manner uh, it's just really, really uh, tragic. And like, I feel like these type of movies are so interesting because they show us a life that a lot of us are not even capable of having because we literally live under the system, yeah, yeah. an existence that we can't even have because we live under this system and we have to constantly work. We live in these cities. We're separated from all these people. We cannot, no, no one could live in like this huge home with all generations of their family, right? And so we go to theaters and we watch this movie, this like this corporation is making for us that manufactures a life that, that corporations like Disney have taken from us. And then more, uh, all of us are more like Bruno than the actual people in the yeah. family. I, I like we're that. all people living in these tiny places. Yeah, exactly. Staring at screens lonely <laughs> with like our mental illnesses. I, I, I feel like, um, I don't like Abuela, the grandma, because I can't believe like the whole thing was just like her, like I don't know, she, like she was just so self conscious. Is that mm -hmm. yeah. She was so self conscious that she didn't like let anybody be free. It's like, and then and then she like she didn't like Bruno's power, and she was uh, blaming it on Mirabelle when it wasn't even her fault. Yeah, it was Bruno's decision, not hers. Yeah. So. It's like the the idea that just because Mirabelle is different, she has to be the bad guy. I mean, yeah. the bad woman. Yeah. Yeah, I just think it's. I thought the whole. I just think it's like. I remember that scene with um Antonio when he first gets his power and he's like running around with the animals, or the scene with like um, what is it? Her name Isabel when she has all these powers with the plants. Isabella. And I'm like, none of us have any connection to animals or plants. <laughs> like, we have to go to a theater to watch this to, yeah, like, yeah. even conceptualize that, oh, you can, like, have a connection to animals like this. Yep. You can have a connection to nature like this. And it's just so interesting that a company like Disney kind of manufactures this escapism from us when that should be our, our reality. And oh. then we go back to our homes yeah, you know, in, like, our, in, our, in our brick houses, like, separated from everyone, which is very interesting in a concrete world. Yeah, and um, that's a great opportunity to, to discuss the code because um, the code discusses, you know, like, like developing a, a uh, relationship with, like, one's environment, like, you know, nature, you know, and, like, just what that could do um, for the mind and how that could establish a connection with um, the creator to help us um, get... Get more energy to to solve the, um solve these problems. Uh, I did also notice in the film that um, the grandma is also the one using um you know the just really color coded language like calling everything a darkest moment and calling everyone bright and whatnot. And I really uh, appreciated your comments, Ash, about um, how saying we are all like um non the non white collective is we the, the character we, we uh, most relate to and um if he, right here yeah yeah, his, yeah. Got the one where he's sitting on the couch like that's really us like yeah okay so bruno is a fascinating um character and uh, another a, another mascot of a non-white collective 
because Bruno has been completely um, like uh, abandoned by his so-called family. He's living in a living in squalor. Basically, he lives like a rat. Yeah, so, so rat. Homie. He looks like Look a... at the way he even looks like one. Like yeah. the way he characterized. <laughs> and how he's back yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So when we first meet Bruno, um, he we, we discover that he's like absolutely insane, and and he has various personalities. Like sometimes it's this character, sometimes. He's this character, he and, he's an and, and we see this a lot in our face in uh, Area Three Entertainment. Are just how 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 people develop their their personalities, and um, it's just really um, just for example, how um, you know, Beyonce ever call herself like Sasha Fierce. It, it's it's so in our in our face, I believe, um, how um, insane we are, all of us, and um, this is a a time and place where there's no TV, you know, there's no TV, there's there, there's no like you know. Um, the programming is not there, but now white people are just highly niggerized and just watching TV all day, brain trashing ourselves. But this character Bruno has has managed to create a, a television. I wish I could play it quick. Yeah, but he Disney. said a telenovela. <laughs> rats. Yeah, yeah he's, literally rats. He, <laughs> TV. Yeah, he literally is watching uh, a fake a, a fake TV. Um, just really living like in, in, in total squalor and misery. Not, not not getting the help he needs at all. Has been abandoned by his so called um family for trying to tell the truth for trying to be constructive with his gift really tell really um symbolic of the system we live in not white people need help not getting it um like the abuela wants everything to be perfect doesn't want any bad things to happen exactly so that in the meantime she doesn't, pre- she doesn't yeah. prepare anyone for yeah, anything yeah yeah the non-white collective you know we things. we we have been fed this like fantasy that like you know we have this family and community everything is safe and protected if, if you all love it and protect each other that's not happening on planet earth non-white people don't have that luxury or ability to love and protect ourselves because we are prisoners a war we have been captured a long time ago we had to get a code you know the white people who caused them to flee who who caused that civil war that was occurring there they have a code this is why uh, these people have to um, you know live in isolation on the mountain away from white people they have they, they, they have read they have fled and isolated themselves so they have that comfort of being where they are you know not being directly subjugated to racist men and racist women but the fact that they are there the fact that they have to have like live in this magical land and, and have like a, 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 these gifts is evident that they are in a system of white supremacy still, you know, and without that house, they are very, uh, very um, scared because they knew that they didn't have that comfort anymore away from um, racist men and racist women. Yeah. I mean, and- this is a divergence, but it's definitely the whole movie is a kind of a little bit of a copy of a Colombian book called 100 Years of Solitude. Because in that book, it's literally set in the same time, the war between the, the civil war in Colombia and the, the family has to move to an island to escape the war. Mm. And so I'm like, that's why I was like, is this book based, on, is this movie based off of it? But I guess it just, yeah, I yeah. guess it's just a copy yeah, without, yeah, without yeah. giving any yeah. nod to it. There's, like, nothing, there's nothing new in, 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 in the system of white supremacy. They just retell the same races. But um, you would think that they would at least say something in there that, gives a nod to it because it just seems kind of incorrect to steal that exact well, plot point that, but it's not a surprise that's well, what Disney yeah, does they, they steal people and brag about it so yeah, that's not, true. so um uh okay I, I have another uh point to make about some of the characters but I just need to bring it way 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 back because I, I did notice that they are celebrating the 60th anniversary of um Walt Disney suspected racist um so, no, this is the 60th movie. Oh, 60th was well, the, the, the 60th um, film. Yeah. And, and I just want to remind everyone of, um, you know, Disney's legacy and where they come from. So I'm going to play this clip 24 seconds and we're going to just be reminded of, you know, Disney is a, um, I, think, I guess it deals in the business. It, Disney deals in the business of supporting race and white supremacy. And look how low, how much low views this this has. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah. imagine how many views Disney movies have. Exactly, Disney that's, clips. That's interesting. All right, so so this is Walt Disney. This is Disney. This is still what that business is all about. Twenty twenty two. It just has been refined and more hidden, more sophisticated, hidden more um, well in plain sight, but it's still there. Uh, and hopefully, this analysis of this film has you know proven such. Oh. 
Walt Disney, Mickey Mouse, business of racism and white supremacy is driving 2022. I'm sure this movie made tons of um, money. And I, I have to reiterate just the non constructive activities we saw in this film. Um, the, the, the constant partying and constant dancing, <laughs> uh, living in an area of the world with a lot of non white people. I, I do see this um, quite often. Um, and it, and it, it, I think it's very uh, non constructive and it has, um, it, it serves to only um, provide temporary distraction and soothing um, sensations within the system of white supremacy does nothing at all to eliminate or counter the system. I may be in error, but I don't think so. I mean, we don't, I mean, <laughs> we don't know what the regular day today is because this was a, this was a, a special occasion. So. Uh, but I agree, you know, there's uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, perhaps another... Uh, I disagree. I think, I don't know. Perhaps another... Yeah, they. Didn't, I don't think they should. Should they should have been partying when they they have their whole uh, foundation yeah. of their existence crumbling, literally. Yeah, with yeah, yeah. That, 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 when, when Abuela was saying, like, when in the nighttime when she was saying, "Oh, our house is cracking," like all like we're like yeah, people knew. don't know how miserable we actually are, and then you're still partying, dancing. Yeah, like you, know, like, you should be you should be do. changing. You, do. you should be doing other stuff like trying to help it or something. And you should also try to solve the problem, right? You yeah, should, you should also be trying to figure out how to function without your powers because yeah. you can't always rely on the miracle. <laughs> yeah, you know? like, and I was really hoping at the end of the movie that they just didn't have the miracle anymore and they actually yeah, learned how to just function. Yeah, like all the people who live in the town, you yeah, know, those people cause... aren't dying. Yeah, so and you it... can live there too without having powers. Yeah, and tragically, this miracle concept in this film is probably a stand-in for um faith in some sort of religion, faith in some sort of Christ figure, faith in some sort of Jesus Christ white concept created by a racist and racist woman. This um it's causing more confusion because it's gonna like you know the, i know a lot of my people are super super being conditioned to be catholic whatever that means christian whatever that means so they're gonna come out of this you know going to sunday going to that, that church the next sunday with their whole um victim unit because this movie is definitely um for like promoting um religion in a manner that is not constructive i think i think these characters here on the screen the attempted parents victim parents of um Maribel. Mar Maribel. I think they, they still serve as a good example of why non-white people are not parents. They only they can only attempt to be parents because they are not they throughout the whole movie Useless. she's being mistreated by the grandma. They're not attempting to <laughs> help her. They're just standing they're just, they're just, like, they're just, Yeah, they're like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. My God, yeah, we have the the victim father it keeps getting stung by bees over and over. He somehow can't learn his lesson and can't can't like you know just a clown. <laughs> you're just a clown. This, this because this, because yeah. Disney does not know how to write constructive parents because they don't want people to have them. Yeah. Like, so either the parents are dead yeah. or they're like these people, just completely useless characters. Yeah. Like not guiding their child in any way. Yeah. At yeah. All. yeah exactly. You know. But there was one moment where, um, I think they were trying, but they didn't do it when, uh, she brought out Bruno's vision and uh they and then he was she was like the abuela was saying why did you didn't talk tell us us because you're about to talk about the family like uh, oh like, yeah and she said like why did you didn't tell the whole family and then he said that he was protecting his daughter i think he should have told but i feel like i feel like he he but he, think about even when when they told why why did dolores tell at the table I, like that is so not constructive. Yeah, and but yeah, like, that's what why they are they making this non-white female like this? <laughs> she should have talked to them later on, like when, either after the after the yeah. dinner, or you, she said we should we need to cancel this dinner. We need to have family meeting, and we need to come up with a plan. But you're just <laughs> gossiping in the middle of this thing. It's so like, oh my god. Yeah, yeah, really tacky, really <laughs> tacky, so tacky. tacky. Yeah. But yeah. That's that's a, that's what they want non-white people doing with their time and energy being non-constructive, not coming up with plans to solve problems. They do not. If non-white people woke up, sat at a table every single day, talk about okay, how am I going to solve this problem, this problem, this problem, 
that problem, white white people will probably be real nervous. But you know, because we wake up, you know, we think about how many TikTok likes we're gonna get, or, or like you know, standing in line for the next Jays. Because we're concerned about that, they're not worried. Of, they're not worried about us at all. And that, that this film is promoting that, promoting character, non-white characters being constructive, worry about you know celebrating, getting married, being pretty, just being silly and behaving um, stupidly. Ra- racism in your face because we have like this character literally being a clown. Like the images are there. You know, clowns. Yeah. Look, look at this the thing. Uh, he had the, he like he spent thong on the bean. He had the giant nose. You know, he might well looks like you could you could like you know pinch it. It'll yeah, make a squeaking sound. Yeah, and he has the yeah. uh, a little flower on it that you know could squirt water on you you know <laughs> like, like exactly like a clown looks like isn't it interesting too like how they all have powers and they're all like whatever like loved in that in what like i guess the town they live in the only person who uses their powers for anything is louisa and she's like oh, yeah. i can't do it it's too much like to serve everyone mm-hmm. But then it's just like it's really interesting because like in that uh, let's show Louisa like for, for for the folks who are who are like less confused uh, this character should um what's going on with her with the stills um but this is Louisa character get it on the screen oh okay, there she had her own song later. yeah let's see. There she is. All right, so yeah, she um, ha, huh, this character here. Um, I think this character is causing a, a lot of confusion. This character could have easily, uh, I don't know, I, I just, huh, I, I really don't want to get into the type of confusion that this character is producing. But it's just, um, um just placing hyper masculinity, hyper masculine, um, like imagery on a um non-white female i don't think it's constructive um i mean i i don't know i liked her character i thought it was constructive that she had a power yeah. and she actually used it to help the people around her think about it yeah Is- yeah, isabella got- can make any like any sort of like fruit vegetable but she just makes flowers all day like you could literally sustain this whole area like this whole town and no one would have to work that is insane to me like how and like, she does not use it I, the yeah. other lady pepe or whatever she can make change the weather and she doesn't use it at all like she only yeah, she does she only uses it on her so she has no control over yeah, it so she, it just it, makes, it, yeah, it's makes like, her cry basically yeah, it makes her stressed out but yeah she yeah. doesn't i never i never she see does not use it no she never said that it's when whenever her when her feelings like turn like if she starts crying it's gonna rain but and they never about, show her like using Oh yeah. Like imagine if there was some sort of, you know what I mean? I just thought that was interesting how and then the guy is a shapeshifter, he just uses the, that power to clown around. So in my <laughs> yeah. mind I'm like what is really the point of these powers because they don't really do anything yeah, yeah, yeah. with them yeah, that's, besides that's be like and, I, 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 and I'm like I, I'm like with the abuela like she could have like a like abandon all these other characters but she did bruno the one that has like the most yeah. best power and he actually like, uses yeah. the power for, to help other people yeah and they didn't and know he tells the, the truth yeah. and they didn't yeah. know the future like I, don't, I feel like it's better to know the future than shape shift or do flowers or whatever yeah and, you, and the flower and isabella that had the flowers she doesn't even like know how to use it well and she like what's the point of just having flowers? i know it's gonna look pretty but like we like need other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Guys, like, these, these comments have, have have given me more information that my mind like, has computed. It's, it's so interesting. Helen, I did see you. You come out of me. Would you like to chime in? I, I didn't want to talk over over everyone and um a lot of points that everyone has made. Z, Ash, mm-hmm. and yourself. You know, um, those are a lot of the observations I had as well. When it comes to this character, Isabella, I. I took her as a white woman and seven feminism came to mind. And while watching this film, I was thinking about the princess frog, how it was black lead um, female and how Disney said, I don't, don't quote me, I uh, might be wrong, but I could have swore I read an a, a article where it said that Disney said they weren't going to make another black lead like the princess frog. So while I'm watching this, I'm seeing a couple of, you know, non-white black characters and I'm like wow this is interesting um I also noticed with the black uh dad the short one the short guy or whatever notice how he's not fat but he's slightly overweight and how they made uh, yeah and and how they made the flower girl's fiance or whatever 
he was light skin or very light or white and he was more fit. And just think of the imagery that that is showing little non-white um, black children. Uh, yeah, him. Like he's not fat, but he's not in shape. I, I, mean, I don't in know. That, in that town, he's probably the most out of shape person in that town. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I was like, look at the imagery. Like this is not putting a positive imagery on a non-white black character. Um, I mm. thought that was really interesting. Y'all brought up a lot of the the light, the, um, the candle, light, butterfly, angel, um, dark light. And I thought of um, race code war and how they um, explained that. Um, there was also an interesting line that was, that's why coffee is for adults. I took that as, um, that's why coffee, I think black people for adults, adults meaning AKA white people, but I might be reading into that. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's excellent decode right there. And, to, uh, and um, go ahead, go ahead. Um, notice how they said a lot of the of family and communities. And that's something that you hear a lot of non-white people talking about. And we don't, because it's being put out there, promoted, so much however we can't step away from that we can't see that we don't have a black community how we don't have a family we have an attempted family we don't have a family because of racism and white supremacy and i think this feeds into that programming and why we can't step away from that term we, we don't see how we don't have that you know we, we can't really have that things are not how they're supposed to be um yeah, uh, maybe your your gift is. Oh, um, someone said to the main character, maybe your gift. One of the children. Oh, notice how they have out of the three kids, one of them was black or whatever. They keep that trope going. How you know, like when there's a TV show, they'll have yeah. an all white cast, and then they have that one black friend. I think I feel like that's what they were doing with the with the little kids. They yeah, have the one token, black. The token. Kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the token black or whatever. How you notice how you saw that in this cartoon. And um and there was a line one of the kids said maybe your gift is being in denial talking about the main character who didn't have a gift and I I thought of non-white people um you know how we're in denial um maybe I might be incorrect and how the dark boy which was mentioned already how the how the little dark skin boy was yeah they just how his gift was animals and how white people compare us to animals so that was really interesting out of all the gifts you gave him that that one. Um. Yeah, and, and and I'll mute for now. Yes, I I wrote down for that king of the jungle. Um, they gave he he they gave him the racist caricature of like being the, the the black male while you know creature savage is gonna go into the jungle and be amongst the animals. And um, when there's this part where Maribel is talking to Antonio when he's under the bed. And um, she she doesn't say I know you like animals. She says you're an animal guy. She doesn't say you're a, a guy that likes animal. You're a child. Um, she says you're an animal guy. And then later, the, later in the movie, he's, he's, he's amongst the animals <laughs> in the jungle. His, his room where he dwells, right, becomes a that jungle. becomes a jungle now, right? So, really in your face, really coded, really sophisticatedly hidden. I suspect. So I don't think a lot of people, you know, saw this black male child running with the animals and thought him. This is really um, some old racist caricature we're seeing right now. I don't know how many people. Are, are noticing that or are seeing this but i think i think, I think this movie is extremely refined i mean they, they're getting better and better with each movie and you know disney has been doing movies forever right for a long time so um yeah you really have to um read the code read race code war and be a person that's about learning about racism and white supremacy to really pick up the little the little codes and signs in this movie that's the only way you would you would get this movie yeah uh, uh sound by incoming no <laughs> person mistreated it's called justice and i'm gonna go over it again what is justice guaranteeing that no person is mistreated anywhere on the planet any time of day or night that's number one. Number two, guaranteeing that the person that needs help the most gets the most constructive help in all nine areas of activity. Economics, education, entertainment, labor, law, politics, religion, sex, and war. Two words.
towards constructive results in all of these areas of activity, 24-7, everywhere on the planet. That's the kind of world we should be aiming for. All righty. Please go to ProduceJustice.com and help become amongst the effective number who will eliminate racism and white supremacy and replace it with a system of justice by guaranteeing no one is allowed to be mistreated and those who need help receive constructive help. This um, film, the, 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 the survival unit that we, that we see, reminds me of a number of victim units I, I've um, um, observed, um, particularly the ones with like, more comfort than um, most other victims. Um, com- like the gifts in this film could be seen as, let's say, um, money, um, because these um, characters are allowed to spend their um, time and energy, their economics, way differently than um, victims of racism who don't have um, money or gifts if we're talking about the movie. And I see uh, a lot of um, victims of racism who have um, a lot of comfort in the form of money or who have like a lot of um, interesting um, titles that they could um, use constructively to help other non-white people or even their, their victim units. I see a ton of victim units with money, and, and, and in that victim unit, there's still homeless people. There's still victim units, you know, who are like, struggling to exist, and they cannot exist constructively, no matter how much comfort they have. And I see that in this film. You know, they have all these gifts. They can't work together. They can't, um, you know, exist in a um, dwelling without conflict. You know, all non-white dwellings have some sort of conflict. Whether and it's, hierarchies, yeah, and hierarchies too. You know, we, we saw this. We saw the so-called. Um, so the so-called um, um, black sheep, the, the one who has been isolated and shut off from the family, that happens a lot, you know, that happens a lot. And in this business of attempting to kind of racism, you know, many people who attempt to tell the truth about racism and white supremacy will become the Bruno, will become, you know, cut off from the, the victims who would rather choose the delusion of confusion, you know? Yeah, there's a point where people <laughs> yeah. are, are saying the things that Bruno said, and what did he say? Oh, you're going to go bald. Or, or you're, you're gonna, gonna get, get fat. fat. And I'm like, and I'm I like, that's that happens like, in life. I don't know like, like he was actually saying something wait. about their crops or something, and it's like, why don't yeah, these people and are I'm afraid like, of the truth. I was like, that happens in life. Like, it's not his fault. He was just telling you what's gonna happen. So basically, it's your fault. Yeah, like people just like I don't know. They just like uh, what is it called? I don't know. They're just they afraid. just like keep. They're they just the yeah. They're afraid it's gonna happen, but it happens. Yeah, and um, all this movie also shows, you know, non-white people, how we've been trained to just be super emotional and, and, and not logical. The, the characters function on other emotions, you know, they let their emotions get the um, get the best of them for the most part. And that is how we've been trained. And that's how they want to keep us because they know if we're not being logical, they're gonna, we're gonna fall into all their traps, you know, greater confinement of, you know, going to, uh, um, bed with white people thinking that we can have a balanced arrangement. <sighs> Bruno, we, we have to understand that we are the Brunos of um, yeah. planet Earth. We have been made absolutely insane and we have to have the will and ability to comprehend that and understand that it's no, it's, you know, no fault of our own, but this has been a deliberate plan way before we even got here. And yeah. fearful, yet even though he's been mistreated, what yeah. does he do? He's still live in that house, but yeah. making that little <laughs> chair for himself, like he has a seat at the table. <laughs> he doesn't have a seat at the table. He's living inside the walls. Yeah. Literally, like no white people yeah. like, really think you have a seat at the table. Like exactly, it's very yeah. sad. Yeah, but yeah, like um, Sorik said, Bruno tells them facts. Bruno tells the truth. <laughs> Bruno and Mirabeau, and they're the most hated in that family. Seems like a lot of non-white people who try to talk about the problem yeah. they become uh, isolated in that family. Yeah. I mean, the attempted family. Precisely. I'm gonna just go down through my notes. Uh, tragic arrangement. We mentioned that a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Non-white people, um, please, please um, understand that we going to the bedroom with white people is rape. They're raping you. It's not. It's not um, correct. It, there's no um, the pound. The, the power dynamic is off. They are powerful. Um, we are not. The, the one of the least things we can do is 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 control who has access to our, our body, and we should 
not give those who have labeled us their enemy access to their bodies. You know, we need to keep our, our minds and, and bodies um, as away from the enemy as possible. And doing like just doing that simple thing at not going to the bedroom with them can fulfill that. So no tragic arrangement, no matter how did no matter how attractive Disney is making it seem, no matter if you're a, a non-white male and you are built short and stocky like the character in here, please do not think that finding a white woman or a white man will solve your problems. It will only add to them greatly. Anything else on? Uh, oh yeah and i just asked myself at the beginning are, are these characters serious and uh no none of the characters were serious besides bruno and maribel maribel took a, a bit for her to get serious because she was doing a lot of um bottom shaking she was doing a lot of singing and dancing as well so it took a she got serious when the problem was like right in her face you know Bruno, yeah, he attempted to be serious, but was sabotaged by his um, survival mm -hmm. unit as they were programmed to do so. so. In regards to this film being constructive, this film should only be watched if you're watching it to analyze racism, what it means and how it works. Um, tragically, a lot of people do not have the ability to view this film and not walk out of it more confused or, or, feeling, <laughs> or, feeling, or feeling sued by, you know, what this by the emotions this film can produce. Cause I know that many scenes in this movie that can make one um, cry or, or make one um, feel like, you know, their faith in whatever religion or, or Christ is all they need to solve their problems. But that's very incorrect. We need um, thought, speech and action that is um, deliberate and um, serious about solving the race problem. And I got, oh. uh, yeah, go ahead, Miss. Oh, one thing that um that you just mentioned is a Isabella. That's the main character right here. Uh, 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 no, Mar Maribel. Maribel. So, uh, notice in the beginning how when she was preparing for the little dark skinned boys um gift ceremony, quote unquote, uh, how she was like really overworking herself, doing this, doing that, going all over the place or whatever. And that remind me of non-white people in John Henryism. And I think she was overworking herself because she didn't have the gift, AKA didn't have whatever white, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm gonna replace gift with, being white or having something of a white, um, I, I don't know how to explain it, but the gift and light of whatever white, so she was overworking herself. That's how I'm going to put it for now. That that's remember in the beginning how she was overworking herself, like she was running around trying to prepare for this little boy's um um gift ceremony. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I suspect yeah. she was trying to um compensate. Make yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. having the gift, aka yeah. white, aka light, exactly. or whatever, aka John John Henryism. Yeah, that, that's the only thing. That's the last thing. Yeah, yeah spending all her time her. trying to like <laughs> explain the family history, this family that is pretty much just isolating you and mistreating you, but trying to explain it to everyone and hide the fact that you don't have a power to all these little kids is very sad. And at the end, yeah. it's basically saying that the power, like the whole family had them having the power of her. Yeah. Right when she goes to the door. Like she basically keeps their power intact. Yeah. Bye. Yeah, it's just um so. For my closing comment, I'm just gonna give like a little like concluding overview of um like just to, just the um, racist caricatures that this movie presented itself with. Um, we have the Antonio, King of the Jungle, um, black male. We have um, Maribel, um, the um, I, I I don't know what she falls on there. A, a, a victim of racism attempting to um, do something constructive, perhaps. We have um, the Gossip Queen. Um, <laughs> for, uh, can, what's, her, what's her name? The Gossip Dolores. Yeah, Dolores, the Gossip Queen. Um, we have uh, Isabella, the um, victim of racism who's been trained to be your 2022 Instagram person who just wants to look pretty in front of people and get the attention in that manner. Uh, I'm trying to get her on the screen for the folks who want that visual. To go with you have it. to go super far up. 
Uh, where's Isabel? Yeah, she has her own song. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Here, we, here we have Isabel. And we have, I'm, on, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make this very, very brief. What's this character's name again? Uh, Issa. Yeah, we have Issa. And no, no, that's what I said, oh, Issa. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay, well, so we have this uh, character. We have um, Area 8 anti-sex confusion being promoted. I suspect could be an area, but that's what I think is happening with this character. And we have the 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 greatest greatest act of racism that can be committed against a non-white person in the form of uh, this tragic arrangement between uh, get these two characters on the screen. I can't. Uh, where are they? No, you have to. Okay. Uh, yeah, between these two characters on the right, um, tragic arrangement uh, in a system of race and white supremacy, it is incorrect for a white person to capture a non-white person to the bedroom. It's totally incorrect. Should not happen in 2022. And after the problem is solved, of course, if it is correct, but um, while we're being mistreated on basis of color, this should not be happening on planet Earth. And then we have um, Bruno um, being a stand-in mascot for um, just non-white males. They, in the state, they want all non-white males. They want us utterly confused, utterly insane, and utterly helpless living in squalor as Bruno was doing so in this film. And um, we have the older victim of racism who is stuck in the mentality you cannot correct her um, use of like language still using the old saying she heard um back in the day has not attempted to learn new information which is why um perhaps the same problems keep presenting itself or i don't know just the typical i don't want to say typical but um victims are older victims of racism who have um Failed to become serious about yeah. solving the, the problem and still are <laughs> motivated to remain distracted um, in regards to the problem and think like, you know, just, just family and community things, concepts are actually uh, applicable to non white people. It is not. And I, yeah, I think that's all the characters that come to mind. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't, uh, this white woman. Uh, very deceptive, very okay. dangerous. Maybe that's why she can control weather. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know why. We both want to share some closing comments, please, please. Um, well, I don't really have anything else to say, but I think this movie was, I think it was pretty, like, good. I, I just think that the music and, like, I don't know. I think the music and the graphics and stuff were pretty good. Yeah. Um, I think my closing comments are that it was an interesting movie, a lot to learn from. And um, I, I mean, I, I did enjoy the animation and the music too. Um, but overall, I think it has a lot of confusing and interesting messaging that I don't think, I think that if you don't really see it, you may not really get it. Um, just like if you go down there and you see the little boy on the <laughs> leopard, <Yeah. laughs> riding the leopard. Um, but I did like, yeah, that's all I have to say. I mean, it's, um, it's very good, good looking movie. It's, it's pleasant. very pleasant like to look at. Like many things in the system. Yeah. And um, I have one more thing to say. It's just that the people who invaded the white people just know they're super powerful. I mean, I mean, they can do that much. They can do a lot. I mean, it's technically a, a civil war, but I'm sure in some way white people were were yes. were controlling how whatever was was happening yeah, exactly. to the point that these people are what is it called marooned on an island on like a uh, oh yeah just yeah just stranded boxed in, yeah just boxed in you know. Um, but overall, I would say, I mean, in terms of, you know, I just, I, I think I have 
under I know the Disney formula, so maybe it doesn't affect me as much as maybe before. So I just thought it was interesting to decode, but um, overall, it's okay. Miss D, would you like to share the closing? The music, <laughs> the music got me. I will say, like the music <laughs> is very catching, and uh, oh, white people—they're they're deceptive. They they <laughs> they knew they had us with the music. I think the music is kind of good, and um, mm. yeah, this movie this movie is very deceptive, and you have to you have to watch out for yourself you know you got to protect your mind and uh yeah that's all i want to say about this movie very interesting thank you yeah i will say i the, the music the noise that uh, i hear folks call it music um i i was very um um aware of it and i thought um like the majority of the songs were um grotesque um some of them did did, did deceive me in a manner where um, i did think, find them pleasant uh, one of only one of them actually maybe two maybe bruno song um but um yeah super deceptive super super deceptive and they they know exactly they they know their subjects they know what we have been trained to like by them so um i like to thank the audience thank you mr kwaku um Sarakis, uh, for your audience and participation please like comment subscribe share this information uh, so we will be amongst and develop that effective number who will solve um, the race problem. We will be here tomorrow, Sunday, 11 a.m. PST for uh, race cold war. If racist man and racist woman allow uh, the power in my area to stay on. So, so um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. And we'll be seeing you uh, tomorrow.